Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Was salatu was salam ala Sayyid al-Mursaleen Muhammadin al-Amin amma ba'd. Today I want to talk about Jewish magic in Qur'an, which is also known as Kabbalah. You will find these verses extremely, extremely interesting. And before I move forward, I want to make something clear to, inshallah, all my uh, people that subscribe and listen to me. Um, and that is that, you know, I dedicate one day just for Islamic eschatology slash Khilafa issues slash political news that relates to the Ummah. So one day is for Islamic eschatology, Islamic eschatology and how it relates to Islamic politics or the politics of the Ummah and Khilafa. Okay? So, and then the other day, so you'll see this one day, uh, you know, I, I don't know if people feel that, why am I changing topics? Or, so one day is just dedicated for that. And then the next day, I talk about general Islam. Now, there are some exceptions. Uh, like, uh, sometimes it dep depends upon my mood. If, or some event happened. And if some event happened, then, you know, then I want to talk about that event. Because I talk about what I feel like talking about generally. People that know me know that I don't even really prepare for my Jumma khutbahs. I just get up and say what's in my heart. Right? And uh, so, having said that, um, I think it's very important that uh, that that people just have that understanding of how I'm thinking of doing my videos. So, inshallah ta'ala, having said that, let's go on to today's topic, which is uh, Jewish magic or Kabbalah and what the Qur'an has to say about this. Now, um, what is very, very important is that uh, there is a whole verse on this, okay? But it actually starts with one point, which I'm going to show you. But first, I'm going to talk about this particular verse and the background of this verse. The background of this verse was, is that how do we know if someone is a prophet or if someone is possessed by jinns or using jinns to give us information? Someone uses jinns and he gives you the right information. And this happened at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, that, you know, somebody was using magic to say information. The Prophet said, it's, it's true. But I don't believe in it. So somebody gives you information based upon magic versus a prophet's telling you something. So how do you know who's the real prophet? How do you really know this? And so for this, angels came down to teach people the difference between knowing what a prophet is and how who is a prophet and who is being ta taught by shaitan or shaitan's talking to this person. So that knowledge led to knowing about magic okay because now when you're able to tell this is a prophet of allah and this is the one who is using shaitan and if you have a crooked mind you're going to be like oh i can use shaitan so the two angels that came down which is how who was who taught kabbalah according to the jewish tradition and we'll look at that angels taught kabbalah right uh so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts by saying uh that after they threw the book behind themselves, number one point I want to make, and number two, before that, before they threw the book behind themselves, they had a hirs, a desire to live forever, to live forever and ever, be immortal. And you know, the highest is to be immortal and to have your own kingship, your own sovereignty. So, mulkul la yafna. Kingship that never finishes, right? So you have immortality, and you have the kingdom. This is like the peak, right? So there's a whole passage of Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah that actually discusses this issue and goes from one phase to the next phase. So the first phase is you you love dunya so much that you don't want to die, right? Uh, and then the second phase is that because of that, you break all the covenants with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like for example, the covenant not to go back to Israel, you break it, right? And then, and I'll have another video on that, okay? But, um, and then there is, uh, then you throw the book of Allah behind you. And then in order to seek how to live in dunya forever, you go after magic, right? And, uh, and so now 
this is the this is the this is the thing is that where does the Quran say this? So now we're going to look at that inshallah ta'ala. So this is the ayah, right? The ayah preceding this, this is a Jutul Bakra. وَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَهُمْ نَبَذَ فَرِيكُمْ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَرَاءَ ذُهُورِهِمْ كَأَنَّهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ They threw the book when a messenger of Allah came to them, مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا مَعَهُمْ Confirming that which they already have. نَبَذَ فَرِيكُمْ مِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ a group of them, you know, they just threw the book of Allah behind them. Nabada farikum min al ladina utum kitaba kitab Allahi wa ra'adhurim annahum la ya'lam. As if they didn't know. Where does this process start? Okay. Then the pro then before that, Awa kulla ma ahadu ahdan nabada farikum min. Every time Allah made a covenant with them, they broke it. And the peak of this and the last of this is that the one that they were holding on to was you would no go not go back to Israel until it's time. And they have broken that covenant also, which I will be talking about at another time. But they were forbidden completely and completely. And for thousands of years, all the rabbis agreed upon this. We cannot go back to Israel. And this is, they, why did they break all the covenants? Because the, most of them don't believe. The portion that is before this, right? Uh, and that is ولا تجد أنهم أحرص الناس على حياة من الذين أشركوا يود أحدهم لو يعمر ألف سنة وما هو بمزحزه من العذاب أن يعمر والله بصير بما يعملون. You know, once you've bought magic, then you know you're going to the hellfire. It's so clear. So then, what do you want? You want to live forever. ولا ولا تجد أنهم أحرص الناس على حياة. You will find them the most أحرص, most desire and greedy for life. وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا And those that are pagan worshippers that also are involved in magic. يُوَدُّ أَحَدَهُمْ لَوْ يُعَمَّرْ أَلْفَ سَنَةِ They all wish they can live for a thousand years. وَمَا هُوَ بِمُزَحْزِهِ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ This will not save them from the punishment. أَنْ يُعَمَّرْ Even if that life is given to them. وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِمَا يَعْمَلُونَ Then, you know, this is talking about the angels. قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ عَذُوَّ and this has a reason for being there, which I'm not going to go into now. But then over here, in ayah number 100, They broke every promise. Then what happened? Then they threw the book of Allah behind them. Then what happened? This was then finally replaced with magic. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah 102 of Surah Al-Baqarah, وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَطْلُوا الشَّيْعَطِينُ وَعَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانِ And they followed what? Ma what the shayateen gave them tilawa for, what the shayateen recited to them in terms of the mulk of Sulaiman. Okay. Now, you know, this has been the number one, one of the main tricks of shaytan. Which is that he wants to give you mulk la yafna, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here. Right? What did he? فَوَسْوَسَ إِلَيْهِ الشَّيْطَانِ Shaytan said this to Adam. This is how he tricked him. قَالَ يَا Adam, O Adam. Should I tell you of a bargain, a, a tree that is, you know, of eternity, mulk and kingship, or possession, that will never finish, right? So this was, this is Shaytan's thinking, right? That this is what man wants. This is his, this is the peak, you can say. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, he says, وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَطْلُوا الشَّيَاطِينُ وَعَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانِ And recite to them what Shaytan, uh, has recited over it regarding the kingship of Sulaiman because the the magic people, right? What 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 happened? Why are they digging Aqsa? Because Sulaiman had put the books of magic in the ground and they had to dig it out. Okay, that's also another event which I'm not going to talk about. But how did it start? Sulaiman didn't do kufr. But Shayatin they did kufr. What did they do? The Shayatin they taught people magic. وَمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى الْمَلَكَيْنِ بِبَابِ لَهَا رُوتًا وَمَارُوتًا And regarding what was sent down, regarding Harut and Marut, regarding, they didn't teach magic, that was not their purpose. وَمَا يُعَلِّمَانِ مِنْ أَحَدٍ حَتَّى يَقُولَ And they did not teach anyone anything until they said, إِنَّا مَا نَحْلُ فِتْنَا Look, we're a test. We're going to teach you something that if you have a crooked heart, you're going to go in the wrong way. And what was that? That they were able to, they got in con, they were able to tell 
if this person is a real prophet or if shaitan's working with him. Now, if they were able to detect if shaitan's working with him, then they then they got away from there to connect with the shaitan and to listen to the shaitan. So, وَمَا يُعَلِّمَانِ مِنْ أَحَدٍ حَتَّى يَقُولَا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ فِتْرَةٌ فَلَا تَذْكُرُ Don't do kufr. فَيُعَلِّمُونَ مِنْهُمْ مَا يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْعِ وَزَوْجِ And so then this shayateen, because the number one form of magic, even today when I get the cases, is tafriq بَيْنَ الْمَرْعِ وَزَوْجِ Is the tafriq between the husband and the wife. And what did the shayateen teach? Because this is what gets them points with shaytan. You know the famous hadith where the shayateen, they sit and they say, I did this and I did this and the one who divided the husband. This is the number one thing. So the shayateen then he, فَيُعَلِّمُونَ مِنْهُمَا مَا يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْعِ وَزَوْجِ So those two indirectly taught the people something that got them in contact with shaytan and then shaytan taught them this stuff. وَمَا هُمْ يُطَارِينَ بِهِ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ They were not able to hurt anyone except by the permission of Allah. وَيُعَلِّمُونَ مَا يَضُرُّهُمْ وَلَا يَنْفَعَهُمْ And they were teaching something that would hurt them. وَلَا يَنْفَعَهُمْ Does not benefit them. وَلَقَدْ عَلِمُوا And they already knew. See, this is the thing. Why do they want life on earth forever? Because they know they've sold themselves out. They've sold their life. They've sold themselves out for magic. Which is, they know what the punishment is in the hereafter. وَلَقَدْ عَلِمُوا لَمَنْ اشْتَرَاهُ مَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاكُ وَلَبِعْ سَمَا شَرَوْا بِهِ أَنْفُسَمْ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ Now, let's look at where, so let's look at the idea of Jewish magic. Uh, so this is where it's talking about it, but let's look at this. This is a website called um, Jewish, My Jewish Learning. Uh, and so this is all about spells and stuff and, and the different types of magic, kinds of spells you can do. Uh, and and also over here is very interesting as uh, speaking nonsense nonsense spells can include this is now in the uh, the Jewish site right okay can include rhythm or non nonsense phrases that have minimal or no semantic value I mean you can't understand it rather uh, rhythmic meaningless arrangements of words and phrases are used for you know creating an effect that does what because these words are understood to be meaningful to heavenly powers, meaning the jinns, the shayateen. Okay? And so, you will also find, uh, for example, the magic of Kabbalah. Okay? And you will also find this very interesting. According to legend, the Kabbalah was taught by God to a group of angels. So God taught Kabbalah to angels, and after, after the fall, taught it to man. So, so then they teach it to man, the angels, right? In order to provide a man a way back to God. Or actually back to shaitan. This is very interesting. If you read this, too holy to forbid, the for forbidden books of Jewish magic. There is a guy here, he's doing his dissertation for PhD, right? And he says, I learned that an important magical compodium of the 17th century Rabbi such and such, right, has been published in the city. So he goes and he talks to them. And the person who is the eminent scholar of being a Kabbalah, okay, Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri, Israel's oldest and perhaps most eminent Kabbalist, okay. And then what happens? Uh, you know, they conduct, before they tell you anything about this book or before they tell you anything about anything, right, they, uh, they, what? they do an investigation. They can't just tell you about this book. Because this book cannot go into the wrong hands. Okay? I assured the rabbis that my interest in the work was purely academic and that I had no intention to use it for powers. Okay? Magical anthologies like family recipe books were typically supplemented. So this is talking about different editions. Okay? Israelis tried to understand how the unthinkable had happened. Now, what was that, that happened? The prime minister, uh, Yitzhak Rabin, in 1995, had, had, was, was killed. Okay? And why was he killed? Because of a magic spell. So this is what this is talking about. What were the precursors of the assassination? One of the most commonly noted was the placement of magical curse upon the prime minister not long before the assassination struck. The media popularized the rather archaic fact that the curse had, had been none other than the pulse, some sort of magic. I don't even want to say the name, right? So then he died, okay? 
And the distinction, then he goes on, what is the distinction between a curse as an incitement to violence versus a curse as criminal rituals? Understood, un, under such circumstances, the publishers who published the book that, you know, killed this prime minister, publishers feared that they might be vulnerable to persecution as curse dealers. Now, this is all under Kabbalah, okay? Magic is the object of what Sigmund Freud called holy dread, okay? That magic was too taboo, etc., etc. But then he talks about, but this is something that can liberate us, take us to our potential, take us to where we really need to be as human beings. And so, over here, uh, was magic the most profound degradation of the spirit? Is magic the most profound degradation of the spirit? I mean, is this the thing that brings you to the lowest of the low or the highest actualization of human potential? Medieval German people, rabbis and stuff, whose, uh, uh, you know, whose pity, piety was of the highest level, right? Uh, they believed in magical activity in, in, in dealing with, seeming to favor the latter, which is to do magic. Okay, as did the Italian rabbis who placed the study of magic at the apex, at the highest level of ideal curriculum. Okay, magic is not impure. You have to know that there's impure magic and pure magic. This is what it's saying. Okay, the the laws of magic, like that of Sabbath, distinguish between magic that is illegal, punishable, illegal but not punishable, and permitted. And it continues on talking about that. A magical book has never before been published due to its great holiness. And so this is talking about the different books that they have that deals with magic. Okay? Death and immorality. And so this is also a little bit about that. So. Uh, I'll just read this part if I can. Uh, Rabbi, somebody explains that this portion of the Torah, the Torah, okay, uh, is is in this way because it's giving you the secret of immortality, right? And uh, because this spaceless section of the parchment holds within it the secret to immortality and world peace. Okay. So this is about the ayah that I was connecting with, you know, this idea of kingship and immortality, right? And this is what you want on earth, and this is what you'll convince yourself that you want on earth, especially if you sold yourself out with magic. And then the other side of it is that you, because you want these things, mulkun la yabla, a kingship that never finishes, an eternity, then you go into magic. So you don't, so you can, you know, supposedly reach your highest potential is one way to put it, I guess. So this is another ayah that talks about the same issue in Surah Araf. Illa an takuna malakaini that you become, you both, meaning Adam and Eve, you both become like angels, is what Shaytan said to them. Aw takuna min al Oh, you become living forever and ever, and you'll be here forever and ever. So this is what Shaytan used to trick uh, uh, the Adam and and Hawa, and it is the same phenomenon that is going on when it comes to uh, the Bani Israel and today and, and Kabbalah and Zionism and all of this. Inshallah, I'll be talking about this issue in more detail, Inshallah, as uh, the next few days. Like I said, tomorrow will be probably about something general Islam, and the day after that, again, I'll go back to Islamic eschatology. I, I want to talk about the relationship between Zionism and Kabbalah and the relationship between these two and how Quran sees this, because there is something very important in the verses that I've gone over that I still haven't talked about, which I'm going to inshallah talk about uh, the next time I get a chance. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.